You've got to do your part, you've got to take action and you've got to pray and believe in faith. But if you pray and you just speak out the words to God but you don't really believe it, what is the point in asking you? Shall we pray then? Are you ready to pray? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and yes. your grace, Lord, and thank you for bringing us together to praise to, your holy again name. to your word and your truth that we can learn from you, Lord, through your, because your word is by your spirit, Lord, and all the authors of your word were driven and motivated by your Holy Spirit and inspired by it to write what they wrote so that we can be edified, that we can be encouraged and taught and known, know about you, Lord God, and know the truth about you, Lord, and know everything that you want us to know and that we need to know for our salvation and for our everyday lives. And we thank you, Lord God, for your word today, Lord, and as we look oh, and to share Lord. it with people, Lord, yes, online and all over you. the world, that they may know your truth, Lord, yes. and that they may be blessed and encouraged and come closer to you, Lord God. Yes. Thank you, Father God. Praise your holy name, Lord. Amen. Father, I just thank you for each and every person tuned in to watch this uh, video, Father. Just give them that special anointing touch, Father God. Let your love just penetrate their hearts, Father. Amen. And penetrate their lives, Father God. Father, open their eyes, remove the scales from their eyes and the stops from their ears, Father. And let them wake up to your truth, Father God. Let them wake up with eyes of, full of hope and, and, and let them see clearly, Father, what you were all about, Father who you're all about, Father. And Father, let them know that you have a plan and a purpose for their lives. That you have a, a specific plan for their lives, Father God, mm -hmm. and they've got purpose. And, and let them know that they've got hope for a future, Father God. A future full of your plans and purpose, Father God. And let them know that, you know, it's never too late. It's never too late, Father. Amen. Father, we love you and we praise you. And help us to rightly divide your word today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 So, you know, there's a, a lot going on in the world. Yeah. Uh, many, many things are going on in the world. And we all have needs in certain Julian. areas, yeah. right? And so what do you... Uh, normally do when you have a need, Eric. Now this is Eric, well, by the way, yeah. and my name's Gareth. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, when I have a need, I take it to God, and if I have a concern, I give it to God. I ask God, and and pray that He will give me the peace of, over it if it's a problem, to give me peace and assurance in His Word, and and. Just to trust him, really, and to not get worried or concerned, because when we worry, um, we're not adding anything to our lives, we're not adding anything to our progress. But we, if we give it to God, we can rest in him, because we rest in Christ, in the truth, in the word, and his spirit, and he leads us by his spirit in life. Wow. So you give it to God, is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's right. And can you share any kind of example where you've prayed to God and you've had your prayers answered? Because I think that's very important, you know. Oh, yeah. There's somebody out there listening right now and they, they need to hear this message. So can you give any prime example where you've prayed, you've had a need, you've prayed, and then God has answered your prayer or he hasn't answered your prayer? Well, I mean, it happens a lot, but I can't think of any specifics. But I know that many a times where I've asked for um, provision, for instance, for something I need to buy or get or, 
uh, and um, he's always provided for him. He's always answered more or less straight away. And, you know, he's always, uh, for instance, if I need funds for something uh, to uh, go somewhere or do something, I've can, always... Can you remember the specific time when you was really in need and God provided that for you because of your prayer? You prayed to God, you took action, and then God, you said, God answered your prayer. Can you remember? Hey, just just one point, one uh, thing, one yeah, time. Yeah, like I said, there's lots of times when I've, I've asked for something and then the next day something had happened and I realised that that is the answer to my prayer. And it could, it could have been financial, it could have been just something that happens. God has provided, he's answered my prayer and I thank God for that, when it does, you know, I thank him. Say, oh. Yeah. Well, I, I can think of a, a specific time or a specific time when God answered my prayer. I mean, like you said, many, many occasions God answers your prayer. Now, sometimes God doesn't answer your prayer right away. It's either going to be a yes, a maybe, or may, mean, meaning maybe later, yeah. or a no, right? So... I, I can remember one time in Southeast Asia when I was uh, doing palliative care, helping people who were dying. And I was just starting the work that I was set out to do for that day. And I really wanted a coffee and I really wanted Asian style, Chinese style donut that goes with the coffee. <laughs> All right. And I couldn't find a shop open on the way there. And when I got there, I decided I would nip out for five minutes to get this coffee and to get these donuts. Yeah. But as soon as I stepped to the door, the Evans opened and a oh. tropical rainstorm happened and it was just pouring down because it was the rainy season as oh, well. Yeah. So I kind of complained to myself, you know, I didn't actually pray, but I was in need in my heart. I was praying from my heart. I wasn't praying verbally, that's what I mean. Yeah. So I was thinking about, oh, I really could do with that coffee. No, I'm not going to get a coffee. I'm not going to get that donut. I've not had breakfast and I've got yeah. all this work to do, you know, serving these needy people, these dying people. And then about 20 minutes later, the cleaning lady came in. And she said, oh, I was on my way and I just got this thought that you really want a coffee and donuts, so here it is. Wow, yeah. And so God provided, and that's a simple thing, but God, God answers your prayers in many, many ways. And, yeah. you know, he, he, he blessed me. He blessed me through the cleaning lady. And I never thought in a million years a simple thing like coffee and a donut that God would actually care enough yeah. to answer a small prayer like that. Yeah. But he, he did. He does, yeah. And I was just blown away and I, then I praised God and yeah. I was so thankful. Because that reminds me of like years ago when I was, um, and I was in, in a flat above a shop and uh, I can't remember what I was praying for. I was, and I must have been hungry or something. And then I just finished my prayer. And in walks my landlord with a McDonald's or something for me to eat there wow. and then. You know, so, See, and so that, that just yeah. instantaneous. That's what I meant by a specific thing yeah. uh, that you, you can recall back to your memory so that we can share with our viewers. Yeah. Because sometimes God does even the smallest of things that is really insignificant to a lot of people, like a McDonald's, yeah. oh, it's just a McDonald's, you could yeah. say, or coffee and a donut, it's just coffee and a donut. Yeah. It's not supernatural, it's not oh, no. miraculous. <laughs> but, you know, God is a miraculous God and is a supernatural God, and he cares about the smallest of details, Amen. doesn't yeah. he? People and, will call it coincidence, yeah, yeah. but there's no such thing yeah. as coincidence no. in God because he provides for you, he, he hears what we say, our prayers to him. And, and even if we're praying whatever, in our hearts. Whatever, whatever's in, yeah. Yeah, what? because he reads the heart, you see. So whatever you're, you're thinking about and praying about, even if it's subconscious prayer, mm -hmm. then God hears it and God answers your prayer. And so, you know, people say, oh, a coffee, a donut, a McDonald's is insignificant. 
It's yeah. not miraculous enough. We want big signs and wonders. <laughs> yeah. We want the heavens to open and uh, bolts of lightning to come yeah. out of the sky <laughs> yeah. and and a bright light and all these kind of things. Drum, drama. And drama. And like yeah, yeah, they want yeah. all of that. But yeah. God answers the smallest in the smallest of ways as well as the big course, ways. Yeah. Because he knows our basic needs. He yeah. knows our normal, everyday things, not just big things. That's or, right. You know. Supernatural events, we don't need to do, deal in that because he knows the person intimately, knows us intimately, knows everything that we need at the time. Anyway, we've got a scripture for you, and uh, we're going to be reading today. We have prayed about this, by the way, just to let you know that. <laughs> We've, uh, we're going to be reading today from the book of James, and we're going to be reading from verses 2 to verse 8. And uh, Eric, if you read from verse 2 to verse 4, and yeah. I'll read from verse 5 to verse 8, yeah, and, and read it nice and slowly and, and right. uh, pronounce your words properly, yeah. if you can. Well, yeah, I'm reading from James in the New King James Version, and it's verses 2 to 4 first, um, in uh, chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And I'm going to be reading now verses 5 through 8. And verse 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom... Let him ask of God, who gives all to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. That's a good, good uh, context there, isn't it? For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not the man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So mm -hmm. what do you think about, the, you know, let's go, we're going to go verse by verse now okay. and see what God highlights and, you know, what God reveals to us. God yeah. is a God of revelation, so True, yeah. we're going to find out now what God uh, is saying. Yep, and in first, uh, verse 2, my brethren... Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. All right, let's just discuss that, right? Yeah. So, what does that mean when we're in various trials? Well, I mentioned I mentioned myself about when I, I was helping these people who were dying. I was doing palliative care in Southeast Asia, and I really needed a coffee and a donut. Yeah. To me, that was a various trial. Yeah, it was hunger, you know, you were hungry on yeah. Thursday, yeah? Yeah, I was hungry and thirsty. Not at breakfast, I had a ward full of patients that I needed to take care of who depended on me. Yeah. But for me to be in good stead, in good order, before I started to take care of somebody else, I needed to take care of myself. Yeah. And I needed the coffee and I needed the donut. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it like, wasn't greed, yeah. it was need, right? Because yeah. it's like every day we sleep at the night time and in the morning we have breakfast, we're breaking our fast. Yeah, yeah. We've not had anything for, uh, to eat. Well, I so was breaking my fast at that yeah. particular time. <laughs> yeah. And that's and where we, you get the word breakfast from, and right? We need, and it, we, need it, we need something to get us ready for the day ahead, you know. So it's a trial in a... In a very, in a kind of trivial sense, but it's still a trial of hunger. It's a trial, um, thirst, and and you know, any uh, basic things, need really. Things that we need to do, that you know, strength for our day today. Absolutely. Like like you know, like the prayer, um, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive others. You know, we've got, we, we've got a role to fulfill in this Absolutely. world. Absolutely. But God will provide for us, enable us, and strengthen us to, to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. So can you, can you think of any 
Can you think of any specific? I you know I try. Mm. I, sometimes I I say Pacific, and some I mean to say specific. Can yeah. you think of any specific things that have tested you that have put you into what we call a trial? And um, I would you know would say that you know we uh, well like something that tries you, something that you know gets in your way, something that like an obstacle or something that you know that's upset mm -hmm. your day or you want um, to get something done. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, things like, say, you're waiting for a bus, for instance, and it's over ha 20 minutes late or something like that, and you want to get somewhere or you need to get home because maybe you're hungry, maybe you've got something you need to do. Um, for instance, I, I might have to make tea for myself and my brother, and so I, I need to get home to get... In time to get it cooked get it prepared you know, for cooked, us, yeah. you know because it's not just for me so if your, bus is, my brother as if well. your bus is late that means yeah. everything's gonna yeah. be uh late right yeah so after so if i'm late and then I'm, if the bus is late i'll be late home then i've got to rush home and then i've got to get my ingredients ready to cook my meal and uh and my brother will be hungry as well, so he needs his food as well, so I've got to get that ready for him. But it says here, my brethren counted all joy when you fall into various trials, right? Yeah. So when, you, when you're frustrated, when you're tested, when your bus is late, when you know you've got to get home to prepare your food for yourself and for your brother, do you have a, a joyful countenance upon you all the time? No, you don't, but you you, uh, you try also not to worry and you sort of, you know, give it to God and you, um, you know, don't, not get frustrated by it, but um, be patient with it and to uh, know it's a trial, know it's, a, uh, it's, it's something that you got to get through and God will make a way. Well, verse 3 says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Yeah. So do you think when situations yeah. like that happen, that it really makes you, when you give it to God, it really makes you more patient? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it does. It's a testing of your patience. It's, it, well, instead of getting agitated about it, you think, well, you know, there's a reason it's late, and there's a reason the bus is late, for whatever reason. There's a reason why I'm going to be late home. Um, it's, you know, it's all in God, God's timing, and He knows the end from the beginning, and He knows why the things are happening and that, that they are in the, in the way that they are. But they are a trial for. A, we, we have to be patient, we have to learn to wait on God and trust in Him and whatever circumstance. And sometimes, you know, memories just come back, sometimes God puts these trials and these tests in your path because He wants to make sure that you are safe. Yeah. And so talking about a bus, myself and Helen, we was going to go somewhere travelling by bus yeah. and the bus when we got to the bus stop, the bus, uh, we off. just missed the bus. And right. The bus carried on and we was a bit grumpy about it. And uh, anyway, our bus finally came like 10 minutes later and we were on the bus. And as we're passing a few stops down, we realised the bus that we was going to get on had had a crash. Oh, wow. So God, you know, even though we was grumpy, God knew what was best for us and he wanted to teach us patience and he was also trying to protect us at the same time. Yeah. So we praise God and we realize sometimes we don't see, but God is an all-knowing, all-seeing God. He knows everything that will happen. He knows what's good for us yeah. and what's not good for us. And in that yeah. case, it wasn't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we could have been seriously hurt. I mean, I remember uh, years ago and I, was, I, I wanted to take a trip to London and I was going to go to London and for some reason I couldn't go that time or whatever and it was a good job because it was when that uh, 
bombing happened um, in seven uh, July two thousand and seven, I believe it was, when uh, there was a bomb, big bombing in London. A bus right. blew up, and uh, lots of things happened. And it was a good thing I didn't go then, or I was prevented from going because God knew better for me. You know. Yeah, yeah. So God prevented you from going on that trip to yeah. London. Because he didn't want you to be in danger, right? True, yeah. And so when these things happen, like that incident there, then uh, Eric was prevented from going to London, which, you know, all praise and glory to God, yeah. he was out to look after you, even though you couldn't see what was going on down there in London. That's right. So what's the uh, verse 4 say? Four, verse 4 says... But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And that, you know, that's, you know, if we are, if we are patient, it's, it falls into our hands, in our good hands, so that we, we uh, uh, the trial, we've overcome the trial and we've completed the, uh, the, t the task set for us, we've completed the, the test of patience. Yeah, we will overcome it because. Well, I have a saying, Eric. I have a saying that nothing good is rushed. So yeah. you know, when you take your time over certain things, uh, which you want a good result in, then yeah. if you rush, you're not going to use godly wisdom. Yeah. And if you rush, you're not going to have an eye for the detail. And if you rush, then you're going to make mistakes and you're going to make a mess of. The, oh, yeah. the good thing that should should all work out perfectly, but uh, nothing good is rushed means to have patience and look at every detail and go step by step. Yeah, uh, that's right. You know, connect all the dots oh, in yeah. God's perfect timing, not in ours. Yeah, we tend to rush at everything. We want it yeah. all now, yeah. but it doesn't and always happen that way. That's right, and we you know we can't say we can't. In our service to God, we can't say, oh, that'll do, or, you know, um, oh, I'll rush this, get it done and over with. No, God wants us to be good servants and good stewards of whatever we do, and he wants us to do it right and to the best of our ability. He doesn't want us to uh, rush things off. He wants to do it to, you know, to, at our best and do it correctly. Well, I mean, like this says, it says, but let patience have its perfect work yeah. that you, that you, that yeah. me, that you, uh, where am I, sorry. Let patience have its perfect work that you, that's you, that's all of us, uh, may be perfect, perfect and complete. complete. Yeah. God wants us to be uh, perfect and he wants everything to be complete and he doesn't want us to lack anything so sometimes when we rush we can miss detail like i say we can we can go off the course yeah. that god has yeah. set for us you know to enable us to to get the receive the things that we should that god wants us to have because That's we're yeah. impatient do, yeah. And God doesn't God want, want us to yeah. lack anything. Because God wants the best for us, so we should want the best for him in our service. And we should him give him the him best of what, our yeah. time, shouldn't yeah. we? He gives his best all the time. We should give our best to him in, in whatever we do to our fellow man and everything else. So the, the, there are other biblical examples of this, yeah. uh, like... Uh, the patience of Job. The patience of Job. Yeah. And God took away everything for him, um, his family, all his, all his livestock, all, uh, all his family, everything. Or his, all his of his wealth. Yeah, all his health as well, took away his health. He was scraping the And he was testing off him, him, wasn't he? He was, he was testing him. Uh, he lost everything, but he still held to his integrity with God. Yeah, and then God what, restored him after all that time. What about the Israelites after after God uh, brought them out of uh, 430 years of captivity and slavery yeah. with the Egyptians? What happened? Where were they meant to go to? Well, yeah, they were meant to go into the land of Canaan, but which was the promised land, right? Sorry, it was the promised the land. The promised land, yeah. And what happened? 
and well, there was it was only a few days journey. Yeah, I think it was a twelve or thirteen days journey. Yeah, twelve thirteen Some, days somewhere so around it took that. Them 40 years because of their disobedience and their grumbling and their complaining against God. Even though he'd rescued them out of slavery, they were still ungrateful and impatient and all sorts of things. And they were, they were just moaning and complaining. So they even said that they want to go back to Egypt. Back to their captivity, time. right? Yeah. Where, back to their slavery. Slaves, you know. They'd rather have that than be led into, the, well, into a good land. And all they saw was the negatives. Yeah, so they were going around in circles, basically, yeah. in a desert situ situation, in a wilderness situation. And God was letting them do that yeah. because they weren't being obedient to God. They were complaining to God. They wanted it all now, this instant, instant gratification, yeah. which all of us at some point in our life want. Uh, but he let them, because he, they didn't have patience, he let them go wander around in the wilderness instead of 13 days from uh, start of journey to, uh, uh, you know, going into okay. the promised land and receiving yeah. all that God wanted for them. He let them go. <coughs> he let them go um, around in circles, um, right? <laughs> 40 years. Um, yeah. But you know, God is still a love, loving God. And what did He do during that 40 years? He fed them. He fed them with um, quail and bread from yeah. heaven. He fed. Um, he provided water. Yeah, their shoes never wore out. Their clothes never wore out. He looked after them in every in every way. Yeah, but he was letting them learn a lesson, wasn't he? Yeah. A forty-year lesson. Yeah, true. and so and it's a, a lesson they didn't need to. If they'd have been impatient, if they'd have been patient and in faith, God, they would have got there a lot sooner. Yeah. So what's the next verse say? Verse five. And verse five says, "If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him." So you think, do you, do you think, do you think, Eric, <laughs> that uh, the Israelites in that situation lacked wisdom? Yeah, they did. Lack, they lacked wisdom, they lacked faith, they lacked uh, the ability to seem, seemingly obey the simplest of instructions. You know, they, uh, they wanted everything now and they wanted everything laid on a plate them and they weren't willing to be patient for it. They didn't ask God. They they just grumbled at Moses and and got onto him and said, Oh you you're leading us out to kill us, you know, or God's leading us out to kill us because um, you know, he he, he just they were just impatient. They just wanted everything. Now, even though they've been so miraculously taken uh, brought out of Egypt. God was still taking care of them. God was providing for them. But do you think they lacked wisdom? Yeah, they lacked wisdom, and they 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 didn't pray. They just they just got onto Moses and Aaron asked him to do all the work for them and asked him to do the, uh, do the prayers for them because they were they were in disobedience. They were in um, they would. They'd probably been feel feel sorry for themselves could have yeah. been slavery for four hundred years, and you know they they were, they were weary from the journey because they'd been slaves all that time and they were they're at a walk. So it says it here in verse five: If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. So you know they could have asked. God to give them more wisdom to help them understand and be give them more patience really yeah. to be, become more patient so that he could explain to them why they weren't getting to the promised land like they was meant to be getting to the promised land yeah. and, and God said he will give it without reproach you know he will give it without judgment he won't look down on you when you lack wisdom you know, when you ask God for wisdom, he won't go, ha, 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 that one is stupid. I'm not going to give him the wisdom. He'll say, I love that person. That person is my child, my creation. I love them, and I'll give it to them generously 
without, or liberally, you know, that means excessively, without looking down upon them. And uh, people don't tend to ask for wisdom because they feel like God will judge them yeah. or God will look down on them or God will think they're not educated enough to, yeah. you I know. Mean, uh, uh, and they don't want it. It's pride, isn't it? It's yeah. the issue of that is pride. And, you know, they, they weren't looking to God individually. They were looking to Moses as the man of God to um to intercede for them they were they weren't they didn't have their own personal relationship with god right they were just um in a, a religious mode so they depended on moses to do all their requests for them and they wearied him with their grumbling against him and god was angry with their attitude to moses and to himself yeah, and they became so, very so they, they disobedient. They lack the wisdom to yeah. ask and call upon God yeah. for themselves. So do you think, I mean, if they don't ask for wisdom, do you think God is still loving and would still take care of them? He still loves them and he still, he did take care of them. And he'll still take they, care of you. Yeah, but they didn't ask specifically for themselves. So, you know, and they, and even when, uh, God gave them quail and meat from heaven and bread from heaven. They didn't obey his instructions to say, well, pick up meat for the morning and, the, and at the weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday, uh, collect enough for two days. And they'd go out on a Sunday, when they, or, I mean the Saturday, when they shouldn't have done, and they uh, look at expecting to find meat and they couldn't find any. But they were being disobedient because God had told them and instructed them not to go out on that day because that was a day of rest. Yeah, it was the Sabbath, right? The Sabbath, the day of rest, you know. And uh, so they they let that wisdom to listen, to hear what's clearly what are clear instructions to them. Absolutely. So think about that before you go rushing into something. Think about it. And if you lack wisdom yourself, don't be too prideful to ask God. No. Don't be too prideful to ask God to give you more wisdom in any situation that you're going through. Because, you know, that when you ask for wisdom to God, that shows real strength and it shows humility. And God wants that deep personal relationship with you. Mm -hmm. And he wants you to ask and and you know, does, he yeah. knows everything you need before you ask. He knows you need more wisdom. Yeah. And when you ask him, he's very pleased and he's more than generous enough to give it without looking down upon you or without complaining. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God, yeah. God doesn't want us to uh, talk or, or say religious things or be uh, make mechanical prayers. He wants us to pray from the heart of what we really need That's and right. what we really want and be completely honest with him. And he will provide for us. He don't want babble or, or gibberish or, yeah. or formulate prayers or anything like that. He wants us to pray from our heart of, and uh, give him our needs, give him praise and, give, and, and pray in faith for what he will provide for Well, that, that comes on to the next verse. Mm -hmm. So what's the next verse? Verse 6. Verse 6. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. So mm -hmm. share, share yeah. with our, our friends so, here. So without, you know, you've got to ask in faith. If you're doubting, you're not really asking in faith, are you? So, you're, uh, so you're just making uh just it's just wind isn't it it's just saying you know, it's just, it's just uh, noise isn't it it's just noise yeah, yeah. God, so so what God, what do you what is your impression of asking in faith in asking in faith and believe uh, because when we approach god we must believe that he will do the things we ask of him that's that is trust in his ability and his uh his, his desire to help us and desire to give us what we need and to and to bless us if we are obedient to him and asking in faith and that if we're doubting and with 
why, why should give, God give us anything if we, if we don't believe he's going to do it? You know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if I ask um, Gareth for a, a fiver, I said, well, he's not going to give it to me. If I ask him, there's no point in me asking him because he's not going to give it to me. And how do you know that? that? You know? <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> that, it, it, I might it, do. Yeah, you might do, but you might not. So if you're think if you're doubting that it's going to give it to me, why ask? You know, and so we should we ask in faith. You know, if he can't, he can't. But it might, maybe another time he will be able to give me that vibe. Mm -hmm. It's it's. But we must ask in faith, and certainly before God, who can give us provide anything for us. Humans are limited. We're, we're limited, but God isn't. That's a, he's a God of a great abundance, yeah. amen. He's a God of provi provision. Hallelujah. And has he always provided for you? He's always provided for me. Um, I, can, you know, I can say uh, 2015, when I moved back to Manchester, uh, I gave up my job because I, uh, because to look after my brother at home and to make sure he was okay. And I trusted God with... Uh, my moving and uh, trusting with my eBay business to to carry on and it'll provide for me. And I, nine years later, I've never lacked anything. God has provided for me all the time, blessed me and kept me going. And I'm doing fine because of his provision and my trust in him. And I've not doubted him and I'm not worried about his provision because he's always been there for me and any need I ask he always provides yeah and so why would you want to ask me for a five pounds when <laughs> you're making so much money on eBay no, you know, I mean, maybe that, I should be asking you name. I should be asking you yeah. right that's Amen. you know that's an example <laughs> yeah but, I know. You know, God does provide for us he will but he says here but let him ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. So you've seen the, the sea, right? You've seen how the waves move and how, how, how they come back and forth. God keeps yeah. them in, in, in its boundaries by his spoken word, right? But you've seen when you go to the sea seaside areas, the waves, they go out and they come back in, right? Yeah, and they're and, crashing and everywhere. They're crashing yeah. everywhere. And you don't want your faith to be crashing everywhere. You want to be, have a passion, and you, you've got to believe that God can do what He says He can do in His holy word. Amen. Yeah. So, when you ask God for something, when it is for need, He will provide. But when it's yeah. for greed, then I don't think He will provide for greed, right? Yeah. Uh, but it says, No doubting. Don't yeah, no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. So you'll just be thrown around mm. in your so-called faith yeah. if you ask and it's you... It's doubting, it's like saying, oh, what if this happens, what if that Yeah, well, what if means you know? nothing, does it? So yeah. if you're going to ask, ask in faith and believe that you're going to receive it before you've received it, and it will be yours, right? That's Mark eleven twenty-four. Yeah. Uh, you know, therefore, uh, whatever you uh, ask for, believe that you've received it and it will be yours. Now, if you don't believe, if you're doubting, what is the point in praying it in the first place? Yeah, it's true, it's yeah. a pointless exercise. Yeah. Like Eric said earlier, it's talking to the wind. Yeah. You don't want to talk to the wind. You want to talk to God Almighty. You want to have a deep personal relationship, very intimate relationship. Let your heart and God's heart meet together. Let your minds meet together. Let your spirit man meet together true, and have yeah. true faith. Because if, if God is your provider, you'll pray in faith because you know he's going to provide for you. But if you say, oh, what if he doesn't exist? What if he's not there? And, or what if he's, he's got something against me or this yeah, or yeah. that, you know? You're not going to pray in faith. You're going to be doubtful and unsure. And then someone else will come and say, oh, you don't want to believe in God. Oh, uh, you, mm -hmm. you know, um, we, we should pray in faith. We should be constant 
and in his word, because his word is full, uh, encourages to be full of faith and pray according to his word, because God isn't a God of maybes, or, oh, I might do this, or I might do this. He's a God of, um, I will do this if you pray in faith. Yeah, and if we're tossed around like the, the sea, you know, with the wind, then verse 7, what does that say? Yeah, verse 7, For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. So when, you're, when you lack faith or when you pray in a mechanical way or you're talking to the wind but you have big doubts that God will provide for you, then you will not receive anything. Let not that man suppose that he will receive anything. And you might say, well, that's not very fair. Well, if it's, you know, God is a God of, uh, a just God. God is a fair God. God shows no partiality, but if you've got to do your part. You've got to take action and you've got to pray and believe in faith. But if you pray and you just speak out the words to God, but you don't really believe it, what is the point in asking you? Yeah, yeah, you will be sure. like the sea wave tossed around by the wind and God doesn't want that. And so you'll have to go back a second, a third and a fourth time until you come to faith, yeah. until you actually uh, come to the realisation, I must pray in faith before God will answer you. Yeah, because we're, and when we pray, we don't, we don't pray what we think God wants to hear, like a recited prayer or a, um, a religious prayer or a formulaic prayer of, you know, things you'd like to hear or things that you've heard that, you know, uh, you've heard that is a good prayer. No, he wants to hear from your heart what, what's on your mind, what... Uh, but also he wants to know that you believe him That's and right. that you trust him with anything that you pray for. Well, what does verse 8 say? And verse 8 says, He is double-minded, man, unstable in all his ways. So if he's not got faith and he's praying without believing, then he's a double-minded man and he's very unstable. Why, yeah, would, why, would, you, why would God put confidence in somebody like that who's yeah. Well, yeah. forever changing his mind. Yeah. Why would, you know, why would, uh, uh, why would he uh, trust you with anything or give you a task or give you an occupation if he, if he thinks you're not going to be disobedient all the time, he thinks you're going to be doubting all the time and worrying and concerned all the time. Well, you know, this... He wants us to have an attitude based on his word and and yeah. trusting in it. This Bible, this holy word, is the truth. It is God's word. Every word is the truth. And yeah. so every word we must believe, right? And it proves itself time and time again, even from the Old Testament right through to the New Testament. Yeah. It can be proven, every last word. And so God is a God that cannot lie. Now, are there differences in trans uh, from one translator to another? Of course there are. Yeah. Human beings make mistakes, but the original, uh, the original translations were inspired by God. Yeah. And then as the different translations have come out, men uh, yeah. are capable of making mistakes, right? Yeah, yeah. But the, the message itself of all the prophets and all the people in the Bible uh, for our example, and there were people who did doubt, and the people who made mistakes and serious mistakes, like Moses didn't get into the promised land because he disobeyed on one point. Yeah, that's right. But uh, and there's like Joshua and Caleb who would, um, and the other ten spies to spy out the land of Jericho, and only two came back, Joshua and Caleb, with positive reports in faith in God. Yeah, they and believed the other were in doubting, faith. Thinking, they were oh, doubting because there were too there many were thinking, giants and things like were, that. They were thinking under their own strength and they, yeah. weren't, they weren't having faith in God, right? Yeah, they were thinking about oh, their own ability to conquer the land. They didn't think of God's provision for them. And so as human beings, we can all make mistakes. Yeah. I make many mistakes, I'm sure you do as well. Yeah. You're not perfect, I'm not perfect, yeah. you're not perfect. So we can make mistakes, but when we come to God with a genuine heart, we come to God in faith, and we believe that God can help us, then God will answer our prayers. 
and he will answer our need and not our greed, right? He will provide for our need. And so like the simple thing of a coffee and a donut he provided, that yeah. was a need. It wasn't a greed. It wasn't, I want to go to, you know, one of these big donut places and stuff my face <laughs> with a hundred donuts. And it was just genuine need. Yeah. And God provides for our needs each and every day as he did for the Israelites who, would, who we brought out of captivity and slavery for 430 years. He provided for them as he did for Adam and Eve when they sinned against God. There was, you know, he, he sacrificed an animal and he made clothes for them and he covered them, right? Yeah. And there's many examples throughout the Bible where God has provided for different people in different situations and he's provided for their need, amen? Anything else you want to add? Yeah, uh, just uh, come in James again in uh, chapter 4, it says... Um, Verse 3, it says, You Verse ask what? and do Sorry. not receive. J James yeah. chapter 4. Oh, James chapter 4. James right? chapter 4. Verse 3, it says, You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. And right, so that, that's about asking for the wrong thing, for the wrong reason. And greed, right? And greed, yeah. And that is for um, selfishness rather than for uh, basics and for. Uh, good things to help other people and things like yeah, that. Yeah, so when we ask for it's, greed, yeah, we don't ask amiss, don't selfish. we? we yeah. want, he wants us to ask for our need, basic needs, but he doesn't ask us to be selfish or, um, you know, and to grow ourselves and uh, uh, so we're rich and famous and we're this or that. He wants us to be humble before him and not doubtful, but asking faith and... Trust him. So everything. that's a good uh, good point. Uh, James chapter 4, verse 3, right? You know, if we ask and we ask and miss, then uh, we ain't going to get. So mm. if we ask for greed, we're not going to get. God knows all of our needs, not our greeds. He knows all of our needs before we ask. Yeah. And, and you could say, well, why do I need to pray? If he knows, you need to pray because that is your part in having relationship with the Most High God the one and only true living God. And you've got to do that, and he expects that. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, you know, your friends or your family, if you never speak to them, then you're not in relationship with them. You don't know what's going on in their lives, right? Mm -hmm. And so he wants the same, but he wants a very deep, intimate, personal relationship with you, and he wants you to communicate with him, have communion. That's what it means, to communicate with God, from your heart, from your mind, from your Amen. spirit man, and connect with his spirit man, with his heart, with his mind, and tell him your everyday situations, your problems, your difficulties, your testings, your trials, whatever it is you're going through, he wants to hear it, even though he knows it already. He wants to hear from your heart. That's and right. so that is a very valuable lesson from today. Yeah. And uh, yeah. We're going to pray in a moment uh, and close, but I just want to say, do meditate upon this word on James chapter 1, verses 2 through 8. And also, that verse that Eric mentioned, James chapter 4, verse 3, meditate upon the, on the word that we've shared with you today, that we brought uh, through the grace of God and through the love of God. It's a very powerful message. And... God wanted someone out there, he wanted you to hear that message Amen. and he wanted you to get your heart right with him so that you can get on track and you can receive all the promises and, and, and you can live out the plans and purposes for your life that God has got for you. Amen. Amen. So, anything else you want yeah, to throw uh, in? Um, yeah, because God provides for our needs not our wants you know he's not not, yeah. not he doesn't there he's not there for our wants he wants a relationship with us and if we answer our needs we will want to be grateful to him and 
appreciate him and love him and walk in relationship with him. But if you're just, just a cash, if you're just a cash machine, why should he answer anything? Exactly. He's not an ATM God. He's the one and only true living God. And if you've not given your life to Christ Jesus, I suggest that you do it right now Amen. because this is the perfect time. And today you can do is the that. Day of salvation. Yeah, today is the day of salvation. So you can do that in your own uh, time when this video finishes. You can do that and you can get on your knees if you can, meaning be humble. That's what that means. Get on your knees. <laughs> yeah. Be humble before God and tell Him that you, you want Him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. That is between you and him. You pray that after this video. And, uh, you know, don't forget to watch the next video, which will be this way, I think, or this way, somewhere <laughs> on the end screen, end card screen, you will see uh, that these are video, a video or videos, <laughs> depending on the end, end card I put up, yeah. that you should watch. And also, this is uh, Cloud Church TV. My name is Pastor Gareth Lavelle. This is Eric Timperley, uh, Eric Splodge, right? Mm -hmm. From Splodge Apologetics. He's got a channel also, Splodge Apologetics. Check it out on YouTube and you can find him, Splodge Apologetics, on Facebook. I will put the links down below somewhere within the text of this video. And I encourage you to watch some of Eric's videos and also watch some of ours and you'll see the ones I recommend on the end card at the very end of this video, uh, which will be 20 seconds long so you can see that. So I want to thank you for spending time in God's Word. Amen. And I want to thank you for spending time in fellowship with myself and Eric and Cloud Church TV and Splodge Apologetics. And I just encourage you to meditate upon the Word that we've shared with you today that we've brought to you. It's given us hope, it's given us faith, it's built us up and we want the same for you. And Amen. so God bless you and thank you once again. Uh, your fellowship means a great, deal, a great deal to us and we love you guys and we'll see you on the next video and we're going to close in prayer. Okay. So let's yeah. pray. Yeah. Join us in prayer guys. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness yes, and grace. We love Thank you. you for your word today and what we've we been able to share holy name. and what we've been able to talk Father, about. Let them in listen, your word let them understand, about faith Father God. And not doubting about trust oh, in you. Praise and your holy giving name. true prayers to you, Lord, and we glorify giving faithful you, prayers to you and, oh, and ones without doubt, yes. knowing that you will provide for us and help us and provide for our basic yes. needs, our everyday needs because you love us so Lord, and because oh, you love us so much that you gave your son to die for us and to enable us to live yes. in faith and in trust and in relationship with you lord you don't want us religious you want us to know you properly lord and we give you thanks for your word today lord in james that you inspired him to write the things that he did yes. as all the writers lord and and the to, they give us hope and encouragement yes. and inspiration for our prayers and our, for our everyday living in you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Bless your name. And our channel, Cloud Church TV, is not only about Bible studies, which is very good for your life, but we also share aspects of our real life. We go out on day trips, day excursions, whatever you want to call them, and we share different aspects of our real life so you can get to know us a little bit better. And so I hope you've enjoyed those videos also, and I hope that you are blessed with these videos and you'll keep watching. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe to this channel and also watch Eric's channel, Spodge Apologetics, and subscribe to his channel also and because it will help the word of God go out to the nations amen so without further ado you yeah. want to say goodbye well goodbye everyone thanks for watching us and we'll see you soon yeah we'll see you very soon bye for bye. now have a great day we love you bye
Jesus. If you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe to this channel. It will help us immensely to get the word of God out to the nations.